Neil Isaacs, the Raleigh business broker, coming to you with a case study, a lessons learned, a deal breakdown, if you will. I don't do these enough, but deals are hard. And we completed one that uh, that went pretty well. And, and amazingly, not that hard. And that doesn't happen a lot. So I want to I want to kind of take what what we learned from that deal and share it in obviously a, a generic and anonymous format. I'm not going to share any names today, but uh, if you are thinking about selling your business, if you're a intermediary or if you're a, a deal partner, an attorney, a banker, I, I hope this can be useful or interesting to you. So this business that we sold, it sold in about 60 days. It sold close to the most probable sales price that we had calculated. But most importantly, the buyer and the seller, the previous business owner, were both really happy with the results. And we had a pretty good transition there. So um, just a little bit about the process. We met with the owner. Him and his family were going through some uh, life circumstances where they wanted to exit their business. The business was five years old retail business and they wanted a change in their lives they started with one child and at the five-year mark they'd had they had multiple children and those children were were needing more attention so that was the reason for sale cash flow positive business so they could have continued to do this but they wanted to do something else they were not ready to retire which is a great reason for sale they were just motivated by some life circumstances so good Good reason for sale, cash flowing business. When we took the business, so we, we had some we had some conversations about most probable sales price. We articulated this, and the owner was realistic on sales price. It's not going to make him a multimillionaire from this one deal, but it's going to give it, the the price that we shared was going to give him and his family something, some consideration for their hard work, and most importantly, give them all of their their time back that they were devoting to this business. And so they said, yeah, that, that would work for us. We had some conversations with them about what to expect, what our process would, would, would look like for them. And we went to market in about two or three weeks. We interviewed them. We put together some, some reports and um, got their approval for how we're going to represent the business confidentially. When we went to market. Um, I say we because I'm co broker I, I work with another broker on this deal. And we we co represented this this deal. Now, quickly we we got a lot of response on this business. I think we ended up with probably fifty plus in in the first uh, two months, which is a good response for a business. This is kind of a sexy business. People wanted to, to own this business in a great location for all you owners who are have something to sell. People want good location, fun making money, uh, valid reason for sale. This kind of had all of those things. Um, we actually attracted more buyers um, than we, not not than we expected, but they came really fast. And we ended up doing, we don't do this a lot, but we did a, a multiple buyers in the same meeting. So we brought, we, we had everybody say, hey, I'm interested in this business. I signed the NDA. We interviewed all of them. We screened them financially, and then we invited them to meet us with the owner when they were not open, and we actually invited several at the same time. So typically, we don't do that. Typically, we do a one-on-one, -on -one, but we had so much interest that we did want to do something a little bit different this time. Not, not really an open house, but a lot of owners have the same questions. We tried to stagger them a little bit, but there were overlapping buyers having conversations with the owner, and the owner did a phenomenal job answering all their questions. And um, from that initial first buyer owner group meeting, we uh, we quickly knew who the front runner was. Um, we did get some offers of those. I think we had five people come through in, in two, two and a half hours or so, but we, we knew we liked one of them. The others weren't asking the right questions, but we, um, we, we had one that we liked a lot. We, we talked with the owner about who they liked and we liked a certain one as well, just based on the questions that they were asking and candidly how they came prepared. They came, one of them came with a, a ream full of questions that they had studied the business. They'd studied our reports. They had questions to be answered. And the other ones were kind of like, eh, this looks cool. 
what's you know what's the name of this place again? I mean, they didn't ask questions that naive, but they obviously just hadn't prepared as much as this one prospective buyer who just came in with with a plan. Um, at that point, we followed up with all of all of the buyers, and um, we wanted to see who was serious, and we did get some offers from that, but we really took this one the most seriously, and we we worked to get a meeting of the minds between that pers that specific owner, that specific buyer and the owner, a deal that the owner liked. We made sure that the, the owner liked this buyer and that they were kind of congruous in, in, in how they, what they're gonna do with the business. He was excited about this, this gentleman buying this business. And um, from that point, we got them meeting of the minds. We got them, uh, under a pseudo contract, it wasn't a full binding contract, but we got them so that they had a deal. There were no surprises in how much was going to be paid for the business, how it was going to be paid, and when the closing would happen. We just had a few things to, to get through, like, like the lease and um, things like that. From that point, it was uh, weekly meetings. We did meetings every single week with the buyer and the owner. We did them virtually, and we worked through issues like... Uh, how do you pay your employees? Hey, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Would that work? Tell me about how you deal with your vendors. What should I be expecting from a regulatory perspective? What type of licensing do I need? We worked through all of that uh, with us, me and, and the other broker, with the buyer and, and, and owner on the call. We had a weekly cadence. There was also a lot of emails going back and forth to kind of fill in the gaps. But every week it was, what's going on with the money? What's going on with the legal situation? What's going on with the lease? And we had a set agenda for each meeting. And we just tackled these things. And if there was a sticky widget, we would attack that. But the buyer and seller just got an, along phenomenally. In fact, they expedited the closing date. They wanted to close to take advantage of, of a holiday season coming up. And they chose to expedite things, which we, we were obviously very happy to do that. Now, um, this is kind of a, a case study. So the breakdown, the breakdown was... Um, why did this deal go so well? And I've alluded to this. It was it was a very marketable product, made money, great location, uh, clean books. There wasn't any funny business with the books. Uh, there could have been extra money in there that I didn't see. I'm sure that happens, but we didn't need to worry about that. But um, we had a, a very good, our client, the seller, was a genuine, transparent, honest person who really just wanted to let us do our job. He he had done a great job building the business and building an opportunity for the next owner. And he, 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 he understood our role to market it confidentially, to bring all of these buyers. And by the way, even after that buyer owner meeting, we still had more and more buyers coming and showing interest. And in, in we were fielding backup offers in the, in the event that we needed them. We didn't need them. But this owner appreciated what we were doing. He let us do our job. He managed, he let us kind of manage, hey, this is what's next. This is what's next. And every time we asked him to do something, my gosh, he would just jump on it. He, he was an incredible client for us. And we really did feel like we were on a, uh, a seller team together. And uh, we couldn't have asked for a, a better client. He was appreciative of our work, uh, very good communication. And the other part of the success is our buyer. Our buyer was incredible. I mean, he... Um, he made a reasonable offer. He, he negotiated a little bit, but he, he wasn't insulting. He saw the opportunity. He um, he understood there were unknowns that he would need to work through, and we worked through those with him. But he he didn't demand uh, an unreasonable amount of of data up front in order to make an offer. We see some people kind of do some pre diligence before making an offer, and that's a strategy, and that that sometimes that's appropriate. But it's kind of hard on the seller when you. You don't know if the buyer is going to make a valid offer or not. And they just keep asking. This this buyer didn't do that. He gave us, uh, he treated us with respect. And he made it very, very clear that he he was respectful of the owner and what, what he had, had created. And it was his intention to build on what he had built on. And that he appreciated this 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 business that he had built. That's typically what we're looking for. That's what we're we're listening for when we're seeing what the questions are. We're, we're looking at how they behave. Um, obviously, the, the financial piece, he, he had the money to buy the business. We had we, we put our 
buyers through a process to make sure that we're not wasting our owner's time. Um, and just the sense of urgency. That's something that we really, really listen for is once we meet, we'll do a buyer owner meeting. Are they still can, kicking the tires or do they shift towards let's get this done? This buyer was very focused on executing this contract. Even though he had some travel plans, he wasn't going to let that stop him from consummating this deal. It was a very pleasurable experience. Um, it did close early. The buyer and, and owner, previous owner, did work together um, throughout the deal. And we've kept in touch with them since the deal. And um, this deal is, is from a while ago. But um, we still keep up with them. We care about our buyers and our sellers. And... Um, and we did a debriefing with with the owner, the previous owner, just to hear how we could do better. But it was extremely rewarding. Obviously, there's a financial compensation with these deals, but it was extremely rewarding to to meet an owner at, at point A, to hear what success looked like, and then to go through B, C, D, all the way to Z, close deal, and then beyond that to here's the next chapter in, in his life and to even try and help him with, with that. Uh, by leveraging some of our connections. Extremely rewarding for me as an intermediary to be a part of that, to, to kind of get a first-hand look inside, to be, you know, in the in the passenger seat or in the driver's seat sometimes, depending on, on what's happening with the seller team, to go through this journey. Uh, I know I'm being vague. I'm even some sometimes you'll see people just put the name of the company out there. We 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 do maintain confidentiality even after the sale in most cases even though our contract does say that we can use parts of the deal after it's done, but confidentiality, if you can't already tell, is super important to us. I wanted to share some, some aspects of why that deal went so well. They don't always close in 60 days uh, without major challenges. Sometimes they fall apart. This one went really well. Um, summary, summary here, I think great product, great marketing from us. That buyer, he saw this, what we put together, and he got it right away. Great buyer. Uh, we had we had uh, put together so many opportunities that we just found the right one pretty quickly. And a little bit of luck. I think that's what got this deal done. That's my deal story today for today. I'd love to hear yours. I'd love to hear what you'd like to achieve. Uh, I am Neil Isaacs, the Raleigh Business Broker. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I invite you to share your questions, comments, concerns, put, put what you want to hear me talk about in the comments. Or if you have a question about your business sale, direct message me or, or email me, neil at raleighbusinessbroker.com. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, mahalo.